Welcome to another episode of the Love and Reality Podcast. I am your host, Ricky Valero. On today's episode, we are going to be talking a brand new show that has debuted on Max. We're also going to recap uh, our thoughts on Vanderpump Villa episode six and one of the craziest episodes, maybe not even episodes, craziest 10 minutes, I think, of reality TV we've seen in some time from the Valley. Um, I'm joined by my partner here, Miss McKenzie. How are you today? Hey, I'm doing good. How are you? I'm excited, excited. Again, last week, you weren't here. I was talking to myself again. It was kind of strange. It was a little weird, but it's it's all right. You're back. Um, just just a little bit. Like, we're not going to dive into it d- detail yet, wise. The Valley last 10 minutes. If you could explain it in just like a sentence, what would you say? Ugh. <laughs> um, chaotic, messy. This isn't even a sentence. It was just like mind-blowingly messy and kind of sad yeah it's it's a little mix of everything um i agree with you 100 percent. but folks if you're listening in um this week i dropped um episode a recap of the circle season six episodes five through eight that is continuing on next week wednesday may 1st you'll catch episodes nine through 12 um i have an interview up from vanderpump villa i talked to um, the chef on the show, Caroline Biles, she was fantastic, kind of gave some insight of some of the behind the scenes stuff. It was a great chat with her. Um, you don't want to miss that. Uh, a new show that I want to put everybody on everybody's radar. The moment I found out about it, a friend of mine, Leah from Positively Uncensored, her podcast is fantastic. Check that out. But she sent it to me and was like, hey, I think this is going to blow up. You need to talk about it. I was like, all right. So I watched the first episode today. It debuted last Friday. It's called The Never Ever Met. Um, it's on Max. Max. God, I hate that it's not HBO Max anymore. Just Max now. <laughs> but uh, seven couples have been virtually dating for some time and believe they may have love, but they never met each other in person. Now they're meeting face to face and living together to see if their loved ones, if their love can survive in real life. They will live together for three weeks in the house with everybody, not just the significant other, the all of the people. Uh, and with the end result being them either making the choice to continue in the real world or breaking it off. There is seven couples with it ranging from three months to 12 years of talking virtually. That's a massive gap, okay? Um, it, but it's kind of like love is blind, but like they have the luxury of having an idea of what each other look like. Exactly. But the thing about it is some of them were scared, like meeting for the first time because they were like, what if this person's a catfish? Like, I mean, you can make anything look good on social media. You know what I'm saying? Like, and some of the stuff that's said in the first couple episodes is our first episode, sorry, is definitely insinuating of people worried about being, um, you know, catfishing them. So it's, it's wild Mackenzie, I can't wait for you to watch it because we're going to yeah. talk about it. It's messy. It's wild. The first episode, the first episode is really good because all it is is really getting to know each person and then they meet for the first time. So you get that and they go on a date together. But like the same thing, like the last like 10 minutes is like super messy. Um, that kind of really sets the stage for the rest of the season. So I definitely think that you guys should check it out. Again, that is the Never Ever Meets Mets. Uh, the never ever met. There we go. God, I'm never going to say that right. I probably I not butcher it so it's many like they times. Kind of needed to come up with something a little catchier. For a, the I know it's such a bad name. It really is. A, like I, I typed it into like IMDb to find out when the new episodes and stuff were, and I was like, what is this again? This makes no sense. Can we change the name? Bit, like already, please. But uh, definitely crazy. Definitely messy. Very much looking forward to it. The um, as I mentioned last week, the goat is starting on Prime Video. I didn't realize that this was going to be a weekly show. So the first three episodes drop on May 9th, and then it's going to be weekly after that, um, going through the finale on June 27th. Um, the Valley star Kristen Doty is on that show too. So that's definitely going to be interesting. A loaded, cl- loaded cast of individuals. Um, but uh, I'll definitely probably be talking about that more in the future but without further ado Mackenzie let's talk about this week's episode of the valley oh before we dive into that aspect of things I did realize I started looking up some stuff I went down a rabbit hole after last night's episode and didn't realize there's so many different things going on that it's crazy to know 
that's happening while these this show is airing. I didn't know Britney and Jax were broken up. I didn't know that. I for some reason I didn't know that. Really? No, I didn't. You like I hiding under a rock. <laughs> I did for some reason I was like I didn't realize that. I don't know what it was because I just like from their social medias I didn't like apps or that. But um, she came out recently and said that they fought over the fact that she made more money than he did. That was a big argument between the two which doesn't surprise me i mean yeah so britney has that jenny craig money she did one of those kind of like weight loss program type of like partnerships and um i think that was very fruitful for her which is awesome um but like from what i've heard it sounds like that it's just like a big old mess of everything like it's it's finances I mean she goes into it in last night's episode of the valley where like it's also like sex they she feels like a tumbleweed she says like she feels yeah. like she's not getting the affection that she needs to feel like a, a woman and you know on top of all of that I think it's just not getting the respect and the the love that she needs to feel from her husband which I mean not exactly shocking if you know anything about Jax, but I listened to a podcast that um that Zach did actually, and he's him and Brittany have been like best friends since like the beginning of time, since like their college days. And it sounds like he's been on the sidelines for the whole timeline of Jax and Brittany. And it just sounds like it was doomed from the get-go, which honestly, if you watch Vanderpump Rules, not surprising, but still sad. Still. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because you see, unlike the Jesse and Michelle aspect of things, you see Brittany, especially in these episodes, really try. Like, she's literally, you're watching a woman who loves this man and is literally trying her best to get the, like, she just wants it from him. She doesn't want it from anybody else. You know what I mean? It's it, That's where I feel like it's different from Jesse and Michelle. She just wants the love and affection from her husband. Like, literally, like, she's begging for it like jazz or um uh, jasmine and Jax even have a a lunch over the idea of of his lack of making britney feel good about herself and 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 tell even giving him suggestions and hints on what he could do um to help you know what i'm saying like i i just yeah it, it doesn't surprise me but also like some of the things in this episode really really uh you know were insane you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, it's, it just sounds like Brittany hasn't gotten the love and respect that she deserves from a, for a really, really long time. I think she, I even heard someone say like, it's been like since the pandemic and I like hate to say that the world kind of told her so, but now like there's a kid involved and it's just yeah. really like unfortunate, but I think she's doing the best thing for her and in, in separating. And it sounds like they don't really have any plans to get back together anytime in the near future. Yeah. I think I heard that like, he's got a, he's got like a checklist of things that he has to do before she would consider getting back together with him. I would love to see that. And it's checklist. like, not even like a super extensive list. It's like, go to therapy, like not make fun of her weight or like, you know, like things like that. Yeah. Uh, like just like basic human things that you would gladly do for the person you love. Exactly. Common decency. I mean, like, and that's just what lacks in, I don't know, in, I mean, obviously prevalent in two of the, of the big relationships here, but um, I will say this though. I did really love the entire scene. I don't love Jesse, but I did love the scene of Danny and Jesse and Jason coming together to attempt to put together cribs and stuff like that for um, uh, Naya had a, um, was this like a social media brand deal or whatever. So they needed to put these together. That was actually funny. I really did enjoy that. That was probably the most loose we really have ever seen Jesse on the show so far. Um, I will say this is the first time I didn't love what Danny said. And it was just the conversation between Danny and I, where they're talking about money. I don't really like, it rubbed me the wrong way. I, I had a, like, as a, as a significant other, how was it, how did that kind of make you, it just made me, it rubbed me the wrong way how we talked about it. So 
remind me. Uh, so basically, it... they were sitting on the couch together, and she was like something about how he like he's the breadwinner, but he was like, and then she goes something along the lines, "Well, yeah, I'm making money, brand deals and stuff like that is like our fun money." And but she's like, it all comes together, and it's true. Like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I it, I remember that. And I feel like not to, you know, make assumptions, but I, I feel like it's definitely Danny like being insecure. Uh, sure. Like Naya is an absolute like 10 out of 10 bombshell with like a very magnetic personality killing the mom game, like just seems like she has her shit together and on top of it she's like making like money for herself and like whether or not he's considered the uh, the breadwinner who knows but like what she's doing is extremely lucrative so i don't know how much he gets paid as like a voiceover actor i i i have no idea but like i just feel like that comment was coming from a place of like he probably feels like you know, providing financially is the thing that he brings to the table and knowing that like his wife on top of like being everything could also potentially grow her career to surpass his. I'm sure that that is probably activating him in some way. Absolutely. For sure. It's just it, like, we've been, we've talked about it. Like we've been looking for like things of like where, because they, 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 all of them really, Jason and Janet, well, Janet's like trouble. I, I, she's trouble. Jason seems a little normal, but Danny and I, like, they were like the normal ones of this situation. Um, I do have some issues with Jasmine. I do think, I'm starting to think that Jasmine likes to like stir the pot up and just like back away. Like you saw her early on in the conversation, Jack said, I'm talk Jackson, Jasmine talked a little bit about Michelle and what she's been doing. But and then, of course, Janet kind of confronted her a little bit about it, about asking her if she would tell her what was going on. And then she was like, I'm not going to tell you. But if Jesse found out, he would be mad. At, like he would be like on a 10 level. Like, well, did you get that same vibe from her? Yeah, I mean, that's the gig. Like, she's probably that's how she's got to like secure her place. They're all probably thinking about season two and like, how are you going to, you know, you got to have one stir the like stir of the pot there has to yeah. be one and jasmine has bestowed that crown upon herself and good for her there has to be i feel like her and janet are kind of like neck and neck like i i feel like for um pot stirs so but yeah i can i can see it for sure and before we dive into the event because I, I there's one specific question i have for you about the event and i know you probably know where i'll go with that but We'll talk about it in a second, but Brittany and Jax, can we first, can we talk about Jax riding around in this golf cart type thing? Like, what is that? Like, why? <laughs> what? I have no clue. Um, no clue. Yeah. And then, of course, this is what we, we talked a little bit about earlier. We see them sit at the table and she, you know, he talks about the struggle of everything, you know, the, the bar, the... First off, everybody, like one of the most common things everybody knows, especially in the world of like celebrities is like you don't open a restaurant. Like it's one of the work, like it is a disaster. And of course, opening the bar, um, she was there. You kind of see a different side of her because she's like wanting to be hands on and wanting to know these things and wanting to help. And obviously, I think because obviously some of her money is probably invested in all of this as well, since they are, you know, a couple. Um, but what did you take away from this entire scene? We spoke a little bit about it, but it was definitely, definitely something. Yeah. I mean, I can tell that she felt really out of the loop, uh, which is sad. And like, it was actually kind of nice to see like Jax have a human moment. Like he was kind of starting to break down a little bit and, and be vulnerable about his fears for providing for his family and you know, being successful. I don't know. Like I very rarely sympathize for Jax. And honestly, I don't even know what's real and what's, you know, him just producing, but, um, but it was, you know, interesting to see, you know, how stressed he is. And, you know, Brit I feel like Brittany's more than willing to come beside him and support him and help and however she can, but I just feel like he's shutting her out. What do you think? Yeah, I totally agree. I, I That's exactly what I took away from the entire thing because she was like, add me to the group chat. Like, I'll be 
like sent, put me in there. I'll help out. I'll do this. I'll do that. I'll answer this question. I'll help with this. She was very adamant on being very much in the forefront of, of what they were doing. So I, I definitely found that interesting. Yeah. Big- like his partners seem to like want her to be involved. They're yes. like need a femme touch. Like they were like dying for her to give her input, but like, I don't know. I wonder if Jax was kind of shutting her out a bit. That's kind of like a vibe that I got. I did too, because I felt like it was almost like he wanted to be his baby. You know what I mean? Like he wants it to kind of be his baby, but it's like, she's not the type of person, which I appreciate about her. Like she is very vocal a about what she wants and her needs and stuff like that, which is very awesome. Especially when you have a dominant personality, like a Jack Taylor. Um, I, I think that he really met his match, which I really feel like that's where he should realize that and maybe realize that he had a good one. You know what I mean? Like, you know, sure. Britney's involved in all the drama like that's producer that's all reality tv but she seems like a real one you know what I mean and somebody that you know as we see you know she moved out and was like fuck you bro like you know she didn't want to put up with the shit anymore but like I felt like she wants to be hands-on and wants to do whatever she can to help him succeed and it's just like I think it's part ego and a part I want to make it my own thing yeah. And I thought it was interesting how she like kind of called him out a little bit and was like, are you always that quiet around them? Like, like the, the other partners. And yep. so she was kind of like say like, I don't know, making comment, like, I don't know. It, she, it, I don't know what she was doing there or what it meant, but it kind of sounds like Jax might have like, I don't know. He's making it sound like it's all his bar. It's his thing. It's his baby. But like, it sounds like when he's around the other partners, it's not so much of a thing. Like maybe he's not quite as involved or is not quite as confident in his ideas as he lets on to be. For sure. Jax's event, um, definitely an interesting event. Um, we'll start from front to back, but um, I, I have to ask you, Tom Short showed up with that haircut. What? What? I need your breakdown of this. You know the guy way better than I do, so I, I need to hear it. So it's another crossover moment with Vanderpump and um in the Valley. So uh, if you watched last week's episode of uh, with Tom Schwartz on Vanderpump, he gets his he is having trying to have a glow up moment and change his style a little bit. And uh, the odd thing is, is he has his like roommate slash like girlfriend, but not really like just. I don't know what to call their relationship, but her name is Joe, and she is honestly like quite insane. Uh, and none of the other girls, like of the main cast, like Katie, Sheena, they're they're all like you know don't really vibe with her. And like Katie, of course, is her like ex husband. Like they've been um, split up for a long time. But Joe, there's kind of like a whole history where like she kind of snuck in a little bit and like was pretty like deceptive and, to, and like with her intentions and somehow ended up like m- moving her stuff into Tom Schwartz's apartment and like becoming his like quasi girlfriend situation but also she's the one that like absolutely butchered his hair I don't know if it was some kind of revenge thing because it sounds like their relationship relationship didn't last very long after um but it was like I remember when that happened and I saw on social media it was like right around the time that um like Barbie was coming into theaters and everyone thought he was like trying to do PR like for Ken or something because it was just so blonde <laughs> So yeah, uh, that's as about as much as I know about the Tom Schwartz haircut. But I love Zach's comment coming in looking like a, a what did he say? A a, a burnt carrot. <laughs> that's so funny. I, I, that like that was one of my favorite moments of Zach we've seen so far. Like he was just like right to his face. Like didn't even like you know. And then he was like, "Well, I'm going through like a midlife crisis or whatever." He said, uh, "Yeah, that was." I'll tell you what the moment. I saw this was I was like, I cannot wait for McKenzie to give me the full dissertation of everything. Cause like everybody was just like, that was the part of the show. You know what I mean? Like that was it. Like more people I think were talking about his hair than they were just about, you know, this whole entire publicity stunt or whatever you want to call it. Jax's new, uh, you know, hairline or whatever, like it is. I will say this. Okay. I don't, I don't feel bad for people like Jax, because I think Jax is an asshole. But when they did 
When he was delivering his speech about his new product, everybody was talking about how I'm cashing a check. Now, they did do a little scene where, like, they zoom in and point out his bald spot. As a man that has a bald spot that's coming in strong, I felt bad for him in that moment. You didn't have to. Look, I understand it's Jax and it's funny, but you didn't have to do the man like that, all right? Yes, it's funny, but man, that was hard. That was no, hard. No, I'm man. with you on that. They were kind of like poking fun at how small it was that they like actually had to like point to it. And they were, you know, they're all debating about whether or not he has it or not. But like I I can actually sympathize with that. I've actually like totally unrelated, but I've been going through my own like hair loss journey right now. And like everyone says, like, it's fine. If as long as you have like enough hair on your head, everyone tells you it's fine. It's in your head. You're overthinking it. But like it's not until you're like basically bald where people will actually acknowledge it. So like, you know, the man's just trying to get it before it's bad. And so I I agree. I think he's going through some hair thinning and he decided to capitalize on it. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that yeah exactly all right um i don't even so i don't even know where to start with this situation um prior to the dinner jesse and Jax were mucking it up with this girl right jack said to one of the girls which again i i i felt empathy for Jax, and then one minute later he looks at this girl and goes i wish my wife could wear that Mm. that's fucked up okay and then jesse said he wants her to be his wife now mind you guys jesse was having the time of his life with this girl okay michelle walked up confronted him about it a little bit and said hey we're going to dinner now when we go to dinner we get fucking sad panda jesse at the table he was like i'm sad and he talked about this and said Two hours before the party, he said Jesse had a conversation with his therapist, whatever, and realized his marriage might be over and isn't in the mood to be mixing and mingling. Everybody was started calling Jesse out for being quiet, and everybody wanted to know what was wrong with him, and he was just being sad panda. And again, now I'm back to giving Jax a little bit of credit because Jax calls his ass out and says, like 15 minutes ago, bro, you were the life of the party, but now you're here, you know. Hoping you know, moping. So uh, don't bring the pity party now. So before we get into Hulk smash Jesse, let's talk. What what, what were your thoughts on that? And what on went down right there? Um, uh, I mean, it was, it was hard to kind of like follow. I've been having a hard time, like kind of following all the, like, there's so much going on. Everyone's having their own conversation. Like, Kristen's like being like, should I get into it? Should I not get into it? Like he's acting like, nah, nah, nah. and like they're they're having their own argument. I felt like Michelle and Jesse were having their own side argument. Uh, it was definitely like very chaotic and a little hard for me to follow. But um, yeah, I remind me how did it like how did it escalate? Because I'm having a hard time remembering. So basically they're all sitting down and and everybody was pointing out that he was acting like a sad panda. And he kind of go out, got away from the table to get a drink. He sat back down. Michelle kind of called him out. But then everybody else started calling him out. Hey, like, what is your deal? And then he just Hulk smashes like he always does on the table because he feels like it needs to be heard. And then that's when basically kind of shit hits the fan from there. And, and, and just... You know what? I'm I'm gonna let you have the floor first. Obviously, we have a battle here, and I'll kind of just briefly give it to you guys at home. We see uh, Chris and Luke; they were getting ready, deciding to leave. Kristen calls Jesse, uh, calls Jesse out, and everyone isn't happy. Everybody's bickering back and forth. First off, Team Kristen again. I will say I'm Team Kristen again. She is a shit stirrer, but we'll get into that a little bit more. But she's right about Jesse. I'll say that. Only thing I'll say about her: she's right about Jesse. But then, of course. Danny wants to comment, which was hilarious because Naya was like, tell him, put your hand down, bro. Like, that was so funny. <laughs> like, shut, shut it down. Um, the producer was trying, I guess, again, as we broke the fourth wall here, right? The producers are talking to Kristen. And Jesse says to Kristen, bring out any skeletons and I will bury you. And then Luke hears that. And then comes to the fucking thing and then jesse comes over he kind of like i guess he kind of shoved jesse i guess or they like had a little bit of a thing and then michelle comes in and was like don't you touch my husband 
And then we're fighting, screaming, yelling. Jesse goes on the attack and literally pushes by producers, Zach, everybody else, and basically gets into the face of Kristen. Um, and and in the side, we have a producer like telling Luke to calm down, which was weird as shit. But all right, we see this entire thing transpire. Mackenzie, what do you got for me? I mean, it was it was just insane. It was it's like kind of a blur. Everything happened so quickly. I was trying to like uh, so hard to follow it. But first off, I have to say like, um. So first off, what I was thinking is like, it's just crazy how like they're all breaking the fourth wall. So like, this is what I feel like every show on Bravo just needs to do. Like, stop pretending like we can't see them and stop pretending like we're not watching a reality show. And like, you know, cause there are just moments like, you know, when Jesse said, like, if I find out something, uh, you know, about on the show that I don't already know, like, those are the things that like, we need to see. And like, it, it brings like an element of just like real life to, to everything that I feel like is really important and could be really useful in other Bravo shows. So other shows take note, break the fourth wall. We need to see it. Otherwise, like storylines just don't make sense. And, um, so that was one thing that I wanted to say. Um, but also, like, what did he mean by that? Like, I, if I find out something I don't already know. So basically, he's not, not even denying that, like, there's something Michelle might have done or that there's some secret that he might not know about. He's not even denying that. He's just saying he doesn't want it to be found out on television. But I need to know, like, what he meant by that. And then my other thought is like, yes, I guess we like Kristen was tr is right about him, of course. And like their whole uh, like discourse is definitely warranted. I can tell that she like just sees through him and sees what he is, which is good. But also like what I don't understand with Kristen is how like this past season, she's ever, like every episode, basically, she's made some comment to Michelle about how I protect you. I protect you. I'm always protected. I will always protect you. Like, bitch, in what way? Like, and Michelle's like, obviously doesn't want your protection. And also, are you even really being protective if you're bringing it up every single episode? Like, it was just a matter of time before she spilt the beans. So she's been kind of like dropping these breadcrumbs that there's been a secret this whole season. And then at the very end, she like literally just like drops it all and tells everyone that Michelle's had a boyfriend for the past year. So like, I don't know, like if if Kristen's the, my one option for protection, like I'm good without, because I would not trust her with anything. Yeah. That's my thing. So it's crazy because it's like, Kristen feels the need to bring up that she has this deep, dark secret. Every chance she gets, she actually has to bring up every secret she ever has in her pocket at all times. I don't know the history of Kristen, but from the flashbacks that I've seen, you should never tell her a secret, period. Like, it blows my mind. This entire scene to me, very much must watch. This was 10 minutes of the most insane reality TV I've seen in recent time. Like, this, this was top notch. However, there's a few things that I do not like. I don't like the allowance of Jesse continually to be aggressive. I don't care if people yell and scream at each other. It's reality TV that's going to happen. But his physical abuse is something that I have a lot of issue with. Like he did, now no, did he really hit anybody? I don't think so. But he did shove by people, he did push by people. And what happens if the producers aren't there? is my real question. Like, if he's that aggressive and not in a care in the world with a camera on his, like, lens, like, what is really going on? Because this guy, to me, really has anger issues. And I and I understand from an aspect of this man sees his entire marriage falling apart, right? I understand that. I feel empathy for that because that must suck. You know what I mean? Nobody wants to live through that. Nobody wants to go through that. 
you know, they do have a kid. There's a lot of aspects of that, but also it's not anything new. Like this is something that like I saw an interview with Michelle where she talked about that when they first initially were going to be on the show, they were an okay place. And then like six months later, I think they said they got green light to series. That's when they were already in the rocky spot. And she thought that it would be good to go on the show to see the, so people could see a uh, dialogue between married couple going to counseling and stuff like that. Obviously that has backfired tremendously, but because of the way it's kind of played out, not from her side, but his side. But, um, but I don't also her side too, because I mean, if the other aspect of this is true, it's kind of weird too. Like it's a whole weird jumble mess, but um, I just don't like, and I didn't like the producers talking Luke back. I felt like they kind of were like, Hey man, like Luke's literally just defending his girlfriend. Like to me, this is me again. This is me just saying this. If somebody comes at my significant other, the way that Jesse came at Kristen, I'm going to knock the fuck out of him. Okay. Period. And maybe that's why, maybe that's why they were so much like the producers were kind of like focusing on him is because like Jesse, they probably like realized like at the end, like maybe they kind of know him and like know that, you know, he wasn't actually going to like, you know, do anything with probably just get in her face and just like but there is a really fucking good chance that he was gonna do something with luke like or vice versa like that was probably going to happen if they didn't completely separate them so maybe they were just more worried about luke more worried about luke beating the shit out of jesse or okay well then explain that way it does but still to me i don't care who stands in my way producers or not i'm I'm gonna, nobody's gonna, first of all, nobody's gonna talk to anybody, my significant other that way. I just feel like I appreciate Luke. As soon as he heard it kind of get very volatile. Every time we've seen that, we've seen him open his mouth. And that's, I respect the hell out of him for that because, you know, nobody should talk to you like that. But obviously, as you mentioned, it's reveal, Kristen reveals at the end of the episode because she couldn't, you know, she can't resist herself, even though she's protecting her. And now she's not protecting her anymore because now the whole world knows, not that we didn't already know something was going on there. But obviously, like you said, she reveals that Michelle's had a boyfriend for a year. Um, And then Michelle (laughs) is back at the dinner table. Now, one thing I'm going to be interested in for when she has the chat, will Kristen and Luke be in the room? That's the one that I don't I don't think so because they're still outside when she's screaming in there and telling everybody to kind of sit down and shut up and let her talk. Which both of these people, I'm sorry, but nobody's gonna keep yelling at me like that. Like Jesse's like, shut up and let my wife talk. Shut up and let me talk. Like, I'm just not gonna sit there and be like, all right, cool. Like, yeah, no, it's wild. I mean, I I think how many is there? I think there's only two episodes left. I'm pretty positive there's only two episodes left. Oh my gosh. They're talking about there might be a reunion. Biblically. I need more. It's eight episodes. There's only eight. It's sad. Well, I feel pretty confident there's going to be a season two. Which would be interesting because who the, who the hell is going to be, I would like to see Michelle in season two, like trying to get her life back together. Less Jesse. Oh yeah. See, they, you know, they're going to co-parent. So they're still going to have to interact a little bit together. So they'll probably show some of that and they'll show her. So she has a boyfriend now. Yeah. She stepped out with the boyfriend. I saw the picture. Yes. Yeah. And who, who knows what Jesse's doing? Probably like snorting cocaine on a stripper's ass. I don't know. That kind of sounds like his (laughs) brand. But uh, (laughs) I feel like uh, and then everything with Jax and Brittany, that alone will be really interesting to watch. And then I don't know, maybe Kristen and Luke will finally, you know, maybe they'll get pregnant. I don't know what their what their plan is. But yeah, it'll be interesting. Yeah, I definitely agree with you 100 percent, because this was definitely uh, an interesting. I Well, like as of like, I, I mean, as of what I've seen recently, I still don't think Kristen's pregnant but she's still with luke from what i've seen right i know she's still with luke from what i've heard yeah i don't know yeah i guess that sounds right but she was just on uh that show with andy cohen or whatever and that she was on there talking about her and luke were still going strong so yeah that was yeah with only two episodes left i did realize that next week's episodes literally tile titled the number one gossip of the group Oh my gosh. 
They're so, all so bad. Yeah. So, all right. Uh, just a quick rundown of this week's episode of Vanderpump Villa. We went a little long on the Valley, which I expected us to just based on the last 10 minutes needed to be talked about for longer than 10 minutes, but uh, it was definitely good stuff there. But uh, just a quick rundown. Uh, this got a little bit messy this week as well because um, Hannah Telly and Gabriella were mucking it up over her kissing Dan. And then everybody was mad because she ended up kissing Dan instead of she went through Dan wanted Hannah first. He, she said, no, then Telly, no, Gabrielle ended up being like the third wheel. Andre got a little bit mad because Gabrielle kissed another dude and they thought they were tight. Um, they had a Mulan Rouge night went really well. Uh, Marciano is getting another chance, which really pisses me off. Um, apparently was it Eric? I think it's Eric. Apparently the manager Eric has like a, a, a arrest history of something like that. Um, <laughs> like a, I think it was like, I even think it was like a domestic dispute or something like that. So that doesn't really, yeah. I mean, have you, have you seen the guy? Have you seen the way that he's got up in people's faces? Um, this to me is where I got mad. I really like Lisa. I feel like she's a human being and even talking to Caroline in her interview plug again for the interview. But to me, what I really liked about hearing about her she's like that person that you see she's a genuine person she does care about people and those conversations are genuine i just feel like she's like i don't normally give third chances but she's going to give one marciano well of course she is he's good tv for that you know what i mean and yeah and that's where i go back to the whole like breaking the fourth wall thing and that's why like i just don't know how much longer like that show will last because if they're just going to pretend that everyone's competing for Lisa's pat on the backs and not like money or clout or fame or in some way, like it just, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. I, I totally agree. One thousand. And of course Lisa's going to keep the troublemakers. Of course it's because that's what makes good television. That's what brings back season, the show for another season. So she's going to give him 10 chances. <laughs> exactly. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. And then, of course, uh, Comic Card was really good. Hannah had a great night. Shocker. Hannah had a great night. Marciano wasn't around. Like, what a surprise. But let's bring Marciano back into the fold, though. You know what I mean? Like, okay. Uh, let's see. Real quick. Talking about they had a dinner that night, which really, really got ugly. Um, they had a gossip conversation. Gab uh, Tella, Telly and Hannah are the... I used to really like Telly. Like, she was really awesome. And then apparently, like, not anymore because her and Hannah just ransacked, talked shit about Gabriella over and over again, calling her. She said she looked, she was ugly, looked like Toucan Sam, and just all of these nasty, vile things about her, which was pretty crazy to see. And then they all went to dinner. And of course, we had to talk about, you know, um, Emily kind of overheard her. And then, you know, it comes out to a big war. Everybody's screaming, yelling at each other. Um, which again, what are we fighting over? You know what I mean? Like this was like, you know, Telly, Hannah and Telly were mad because uh, Grace initially liked Andre, but Grace politely said, hey, you're not my cup of tea, but apparently that's a problem now. You know what I mean? Like, I just don't understand that aspect of things. Um, and then just to me, Hannah's absolutely insane. These people are crazy. I don't, I just don't understand. Like to me, it's about the service. It's about the delivering the expectations, but it's be coming less about that and more about this drama and this drama is just becoming boring like and yeah i was gonna say boring. it just sounds so petty it is it's like we're it's like high school kid like we're literally arguing because one girl liked a dude he told her he wasn't into her and then he went and started talking to the girl that he liked <laughs> normal <laughs> oh my god god forbid oh like, my gosh exactly I feel like that, they're reaching yeah it is and it's 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 getting hard to watch at times it is it's it's getting frustrating a little bit it's drama filled i mean that's that's what keeps people coming back but there's got to be an element of something that really keeps it interesting it's it's not there but um but yeah so next week we'll be back Mackenzie's leaving me she's going out of the country she will not be back but then she'll be back the week after that like i said next week I'll probably start my breakdowns of the Never Ever Mets along with the Valley and Vanderpump. Don't miss out on my circle breakdowns. Um, it's been surprisingly really good this year. I've told Mackenzie about this off the air. It's the twist and turns 
I've actually kept it a little bit interesting per versus prior years. They're doing something a little bit different. I have heard some rumblings that they're talking about doing an all-star year, which would be kind of cool because a lot of the people that you see on social media from the Netflix world, from the circle are pretty cool people. Um, but other than that, that's it for this week's episode. Um, I'm excited for the Valley next week. I can't wait to talk about it because it's going to be insane. Mackenzie, I'm just going to need you to like send me like a brief paragraph that I can read to the audiences right. next week, like a breakdown. I'll work on that. <laughs> I need your breakdown of next episode because like if this, if this, the, the aftermath of this should be fantastic. It should I be know. fantastic. So, all right, that's it for this week's episode of Love and Reality Podcast. We will talk to you guys next week. Bye.